welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Kiriala and today I am coming at you with my foundation done because I'm doing a first impression today on the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 foundation. I really wanted to do a standalone video for this but in this video I'm going to be trying out new products and doing kind of first impressions on a few products that I picked up. I've got a whole drawer here of new things which you can't see or visualize but it's here trust me I actually have been sitting here for the last 20 minutes thinking that I was filming thinking that I was recording so I've tried out a new concealer already that's just the story of my life because I just I I cannot function as a human being so welcome to the video but I am just going to pin back my hair because it was a pain in the butt anyway and we're just gonna get right to it. So I've already applied this. This is the all night long, all night long, all night, yeah, all night long. Why am I this way? I have no idea. <laughs> but it's by Barry M. It's the all night long full coverage concealer. And I've just put it underneath my eyes and in the center to brighten up the face because honey, this is pale. This is the shade One Milk. And honestly, it works well for me. So pale girls out there, if you want a good pale concealer, it's like a thick, kind of consistency it's not very liquidy so if you like liquidy concealers you won't like this one but it goes on really nicely really smooth as you can see my under eye area is very brightened and it hasn't enhanced but it hasn't concealed my fine lines or anything which you know what concealer really does that but that is my first impressions on the Barry M full coverage concealer but anyway now we've cleared all that up let's get into the rest of the face of first impressions next I'm gonna go in with the Laura Gala powder which I'm hoping this is gonna work out for my skin this is like a little sample that I got it's the baked balance and brighten for oh foundation <laughs> and this is in the shade fair I'm hoping this is gonna work for me but it looks like it was gonna be a little too dark so I'm gonna try it like in the contour area just taking it on like a massive fluffy brush and let's just see it's looking okay right now I think it may be a little bit too dark so I'm not gonna bring it all over my face just because I don't want to look like an Olympia today funnily enough <laughs> just gonna quickly use some of my own powder so I can actually set this give the foundation a fair chance you know I'm just gonna use my hourglass one that powder as well it didn't feel very smoothing it kind of dragged on the skin a little I know it was a powder foundation but still I don't want foundations that feel like they're dragging on my skin so just thin it with my normal okay so now on to my powder bronzer and everything like that I've got this palette which is by Revlon and it's the photo ready sunlit dream highlight palette I know I swear I swatched this in store and it had like a bronzer and stuff in it. Let's have a look. God damn it. I hate these stickers. I can never get them off with my nail. Tweezers in my life. Mm, last night. Tweezers in my life. I don't know what is wrong with me. I'm bringing back all the old school songs today. I'm a musical mystery today. Oh my god. Get open. That'll do, don't care. That'll. I could have sworn that these looked like bronzers in store and I swatched them they were matte. They're all highlight and shades. What, what was I thinking? I've got a nice mirror in this palette actually. It's very clear. That is a full blown highlight there. I don't know what I was thinking. Although it's very smooth and very nice looking. Let's see what these paler shades look like. Ooh. Wow. Oh man, these might be really good highlights, just not a bronzer, which is what I thought it was. Okay, so I'm gonna go do my bronzing and contouring off camera and I'll be right back. I really thought I had a contour palette, but clearly I don't, so sorry about that. Hold please. <laughs> okay, I am back. I've done bronzer and blush because I actually didn't have a new blush either. I could have sworn I had all this prepared, but I didn't and I'm so sorry, I'm such a failure. But I've used the Too Faced Cocoa Contour and I just used the shade Medium cocoa and then I used the Revolution blush palette in hot spice and I used this orangey mauvey kind of subtle shade back here but let's try this sunlit dream palette I'm gonna go in with this and this shade just kind of like mix and match them because I just want to make sure that I don't have a dark cast and let's see how they look on my face because they look pretty nice on my hand so let's see Ooh. This is really pretty, 
really natural looking it's not like too blinding or anything it's going on super smoothly and it's like blending really nicely it's not like sitting on the skin it's like melting in but it is very powdery i really like the actual glow because it's not glittery and they also feel nice and smooth in the pan too this would be for more fair to kind of like medium skin tones i think they had another one but i think it was more like crazy colors they don't really have any dark colors so that's a drawback but apart from that really nice formula i really like these powders actually well done revlon okay so moving on to eyes i have a few things that i could actually use in here <laughs> So I'm just trying to determine what exactly I want to use. So I have this eyeshadow palette, which is from Primark, and it's the Amber Passion eyeshadow palette. I also have these things from Barry M that I really want to use. This is supposed to be like a Huda Beauty dupe for the miniature ones that she brought out. It's got very warm shades. It's got some metallic shades in here and mattes. Obviously the massive difference with these is this is three pound and Huda's are 25 pound, which I guess I'm gonna be doing warm tones today. <laughs> I'm gonna zoom you guys in so we can see what's really going on with these shadows. So let's get going. Hello. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this Barry M concealer as a base. My lids are nice and tacky from that concealer actually. So hopefully it'll be a good base for the eyeshadow. I'm gonna go in with the lightest kind of matte shade in here, which is called Sunrise. It's actually like no fallout and a lot of pigment I picked up on the brush. Let's see how these work. I've actually heard a lot of good things about the Primark eyeshadows, so we shall see. Let's fill this up a little bit more. Ooh. Hmm. These are actually blending decently well. <laughs> uh, kind of shook right now. I'm gonna just blend it onto the lid a little. I think you can tell the pigment is not the same as what's in the palette, but I actually prefer that because these are very bright colors. I'm gonna go in with like a more pointed brush and see if that will kind of build up the pigment a little bit better. Let's try and build this up a little bit more. By the way, please ignore my eyebrows. I know I need to pluck them, but I just can't be bothered. I can't get over how blended that is. It looks so nice. There is no Patchiness. I need to try some of the other shades in here because I am really, really shocked. Now I'm going to go into the color that's just over, which is called Burn, right here. And I'm just going to start placing this on the outer corner right here. Now I'm thinking about using some glitter with this look. Because of this glitter, it's got gold and silver in it. I might try using the silvery and gold shades in here. I'm going to go in with the shade Champagne on the inner corner. I'm going to quickly swatch this. Ooh, wow, that is... Let's see how this works without like a setting spray or anything, first of all. And I'm not going to cut the crease, I just want to be kind of just haphazard with it. Okay, the payoff with these is not as good. It's doing that thing where, where I'm like pressing down on the palette, like you can probably see that. It's kind of packing the shadow down. Try building this up a little. It's looking a little better, but I want to add some setting spray to see if I can really get it to pop. And just to make you aware, I'm really digging my brush into this now. Let's wet the brush a little. And let's see how this looks now. I mm, can't tell whether this is helping or not. It's coming out a little better, but it's still not very metallic. I'm now going to go in with the gold shade, which is called Aura. And I'm just going to swatch this one as well. Again, it feels... Ooh, that looks crazy metallic. Like, oh my gosh. Look at that swatch. Oh my god. Okay, again, I'm going to try this one without any setting spray. I'm just going to go in the middle here. This one is so much better. Look at that. Freaking look at that. That is very much gold. I mean, it's not the best metallic that I've ever seen, but it is pretty good for the price. It's doing exactly the same though as the champagne did. It's kind of packing down the shadow a little bit. I'm just going to take a little bit of the dark brown burn shade and just kind of blend them together on a fluffy brush. That champagne shade has pretty much disappeared. I'm going to try going in with my finger and see if that 
makes it any better. When I swatch it on my finger, it doesn't look that bad. So let's try with the finger. The pigment isn't really like transferring onto my lid, which is so freaking annoying. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye off camera and then I'll be right back and we'll finish off the eyes. Okay, so I finished up the other eye. I had a little bit of patchiness on this eye just to make you aware to be completely transparent but I think it's blended out okay now but it was a little bit patchy earlier on. Now I'm gonna go on the lower lash line. First I want to add kind of like a pop of colour to my waterline so I'm gonna try this by Revolution Pro. It is the Supreme Pigment Gel Eyeliner in just the colour blue. It's like a bright blue from the looks of the packaging so let's take a quick look inside. What the heck? Oh my gosh, I got a dud one. The lid is completely like saturated with the freaking thing. Ugh. Just gonna sharpen it, disinfect it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've sharpened it now and it is a bright matte blue. I thought it was gonna be shimmery for some reason, but it's not. Not a lot of pigment is coming off. Um, it's not the best payoff, but it's okay. It took a little bit of building. Okay, so my camera battery died and I didn't actually have one ready to charge, so I've charged up a little bit of a battery and we're gonna finish off these eyes. I don't know how I feel about this eyeliner because it kind of goes everywhere, like the actual pencil is kind of like slippery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brown shade which is called Radiate. I'm not quite sure why it's called that but I'm going to take this colour anyway. I'm just going to take a little bit of that colour and I'm going to go underneath the blue a little bit. This looks a lot darker on my actual eye than it does in the pan. Can you see that? It looks almost like a chocolatey brown on my eyes and then it looks quite light in the pan. It's because this doesn't have like a true highlight shade for me, I'm gonna go back in with the highlight palette that I use and I'm just gonna take some of the white gold shade and put that on my inner corner. So as far as first impressions on the eyeshadow palette, I think it's good. I don't think it's the best. The mattes were really blendable. They were decently pigmented. You get nine shades in here and you get five shimmers and four mattes. It's okay for the price, although I think if you want to get a cheap palette, you get more variation. Revolutions for pound palettes, like these are amazing. These are one of my favorite palettes that I use, especially this one. This is the Iconic Fever palette. I've been using this a lot in my everyday makeup. And I just feel like you get more blendability with these and you get more color variation and there's more choice. You get a lot more shades for the pound more with the Revolution ones. So personally, I would probably recommend going with Revolution. This palette wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong, it's okay for the price but I just feel like I can get a similar look with maybe better blend and better pigment with the Makeup Revolution ones. Although I like the look that I created today with this. Now I want to add some sparkle. I want to add some pizzazz. So I'm going to go in with the Glitter Bomb Glitter Eyeshadow from Barry M and this is in the shade 2O Snap. We are taking it back to That's So Raven. That's So Raven which is still, to be fair, one of my favorite shows. Anyway, we're gonna go into the glitter. So this kind of looks similar to the Stila Magnificent Metals. I don't know if it is going to be. It's on a little weird doe foot. I don't know if I like the doe foot applicator. Not a lot of actual product is coming out. Let's see. Oh, mama. Hmm, this does not look that good. <laughs> Swatch-wise, it looks like a very sparse glitter. Maybe if I pat it on, it'll be better. So when you pat it on, it's a lot better, but I wouldn't say it's like a dupe for the Stila ones. I'm gonna just dab it on the champagne color that just didn't really show up. I wanna kinda make a gradient. It's actually quite pretty. I don't think the lighting is doing it justice, but I actually quite like the reflex on this. I'm gonna try building it up a little bit more. They're not bad, but you wouldn't be able to go ahead and create a cut crease. It doesn't have the base pigment enough to actually do that. The actual applicator isn't that good either with this. It's okay if you just want like a light touch of glitter. And it's still kind of drying down a little bit, so I'm just gonna do the other eye real quick. Yeah, don't start dragging this because it just moves the glitter around. So you wanna like press this on so it doesn't go everywhere. While this is drying down, I'm gonna quickly add a coat of mascara. I'm gonna use the Kiko False Lash Concentrate Volume and Definition Top Coat Mascara. It comes in a bright pink packaging. <laughs> and the wand is 
plastic, which is pretty much my preferred mascara wand, but it's, it's plastic and it's got different kind of lengths of bristles. So we're gonna try this one out because this one could be promising. Just added quite a lot of length my lashes it's not really giving a lot of volume though which is what i like as well this says that it's like a mascara top coat i don't know what that means i don't want to have to have a top coat for my mascara why would you want that i'm getting like little specks on my face i don't know if you can see that i do not want that okay i'm gonna stop using this mascara i don't really like it i feel like it's added like a lot of length but volume wise, I don't really like it. I'm gonna go in with my Lash Sensational over top and finish the other eye as well. <gasps> yeah. Oh god dang it. We are, we're gonna sort that. I gotta leave it dry because, because otherwise it'll go everywhere and mess up my foundation. I might try this as a lash top coat as it states to see if that makes my eyelashes any better. I'm just gonna leave this coat dry and then try that one again over top and see if it makes a massive difference. Okay, let's try. I kind of get it because the bristles are like very spiky so they comb through the lashes quite well. I don't think that did anything. <laughs> no, nothing whatsoever. Okay, so I pass on the Kiko Top Coat Mascara. I thought it was gonna be good because of the brush but it just wasn't meant to be. The glitter's kind of dried a little bit Chunky, oh, kind of flaking off a little bit. Mm. It's not really doing that on this side though. Maybe I added too much on this side so it's kind of chunked up. But on this side, it's laying quite nicely. Advice would be to go light handed if you buy any of these. Can I cut you off now? Yay. So, final thing for my eyes is lashes. And I've got these ones which are from Primark, which I've heard so many good things about. I've got the style London, which are these pretty wispy, kind of double layered, almost triple layered looking lashes. Then I've got the style Milan, which again are very wispy, but they're a bit more chunky. And these are the kind of lashes that I really like to wear. So I'm excited to try these. And then finally, I've got the deluxe lashes, which are in the style Kylie. They look similar to the Milan ones. Which ones am I going to use today with this look? Um... I'm gonna go in with the Milan set simply because they're more tapered on the inner corner so and I want to let the glitter kind of shine and sparkle so we're gonna try these I'm gonna have to trim them to my eye they feel really they feel really nice and soft like they don't feel stiff I'm gonna quickly go measure these to my eyes and then I'll be right back okay so here are the lashes they are super duper duper dramatic I actually quite like them I think these are really good for the money like five pound for a lash like this they look way more expensive than just five pound lashes also the band was super flexible so they were really easy to put on I would definitely recommend picking up some of these now I need to move on to my brows I actually have have two new products for brows. I have the, the Maybelline Brow Precise Micro Pencil in the shade Deep Brown and then also I have by Revlon the Colorstay Brow Mousse in the shade Soft Brown. So I'm gonna first of all fill it in with the micro pencil and then see what the brow mousse is about because I haven't actually looked inside of it. Okay so I have had so much bad luck today with my camera shutting off and stuff like I don't know why it keeps doing it to me this is the third time I've tried filming this so I'm pretty annoyed and I'm getting a bit of a headache right now but I did my brows thought I was filming wasn't so I just want to talk through the brow pencil I actually really like this it's similar to the Revolution Pro one which I use pretty much every single time I do my makeup it's super smooth but not too creamy it's like that perfect in between also the spoolie on this isn't crap so it's really good to brush through the brows so I actually really liked creating my brows with this. And then the other thing that I tried really confused me. <laughs> you open it up and it's a spoolie and you can probably see there's like product on it. Basically you twist the bottom of this and then product comes out of the actual spoolie itself. I don't know how I feel about this, like I get the concept, it could be a good idea, but because the actual product just kind of clumps up in one section where it comes out from, it can get messy real quick. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep trying this and see what I think about it and then let you guys know if I really like it and if it's something that I think is good to use. But as far as my eyebrows, I quite like the way they look right now. So I'm not really complaining, I'm just saying it just 
which weirded me out a bit. <laughs> Final thing to do is lips, and I've got this by L'Oreal, which is their new ultra matte liquid lipstick from the chocolate line. This is in the shade 844 Sweet Tooth, and apparently this smells like chocolate. This is like a nudie kind of shade, so hopefully this will look nice with this makeup look. Oh my gosh. It smells like drinking chocolate, like you know a hot chocolate, it smells like that. It's got a nice kind of diamond shaped tip, so hopefully we'll be able to get a nice precise line with this. Ooh, oh. I don't know how I feel about this colour. It's kind of like a peachy brown. I guess it kind of goes with the look. I'm not sure how I feel about the doe foot. It doesn't really pick up a lot of product and it's kind of stiff to move around on the lips. It also kind of tickles. <laughs> I've never had a lip brush tickle me before. Consistency wise, it's really creamy. It's kind of like sticking together a little bit. Can you see? I'm gonna let it dry down and see if that's gonna stop. But as far as the color, mm, I think I might put a lip line around this to kind of make it more of like a brown tone. It's like a poopy peachy color and I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with Milani Spice Lip Liner just around the edge and kind of blend it in so I prefer the colour a bit more. I don't know if that was the best colour choice for the liquid lipstick, but I think I prefer it more now. <laughs> okay, so what's left to do is set the face. I'm going to use the MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus in the lavender, because I haven't actually used this on my face yet. So I have a feeling I just drenched myself in it. <laughs> okay, so this is the finished look. I like the way it all came together in the end. The lipstick has completely dried down now, so it's not doing that weird like tacky thing anymore. The formulation though was a little bit thicker than what I typically like for liquid lipsticks but I think it looks pretty now that I've paired it with the lip liner. The colour just wasn't really my favourite <laughs> and I really like the eye look but I thought I'd just do a quick recap over the products that I've used and my opinions. So let's start off with the concealer. So this concealer actually really surprised me. It's a good shade for me. It's really brightening underneath the eyes and it's got really good coverage. It's really affordable. I think it was like four pounds, something like that. It pretty much set down itself. It didn't really need powder, but I did use a little bit underneath just to make sure it was set. But it does kind of set down to like an almost matte finish. It felt tightening underneath the eyes a little bit. Typically I go for more of a hydrating concealer because I do have like fine lines under here but this wasn't bad and it didn't accentuate those lines but it didn't like help them disappear at all and I think I'm gonna reach for this again I'll be honest I think it's a really good affordable concealer. Next is the Sunlit Dream palette from Revlon. I actually really like this. It's still on my face, still looks really pretty. As I said, it's more of like a natural glow and I feel like it might have like worn off a little bit. I've been filming for like four hours already. <laughs> I feel like in my whole collection, I don't really have anything similar to this, especially not from the drugstore. So I feel like this is really good for you girls who are just like a nice kind of glow from within. Now for the Primark eyeshadow palette. Um. I wouldn't really recommend getting these. The matte eyeshadows are quite nice and they blended quite nicely, but I had a bit of trouble with the shimmers, which typically shimmer shades in affordable palettes are usually quite good because they're easier to formulate apparently. So for a palette for three pounds, I'd feel like the Makeup Revolution one that I mentioned would be a better option for four pounds. So the Makeup Revolution eye pencil, I like the formula. So the actual formula is really good. It's like quite vibrant underneath my eyes there and it's staying put so once I put it down and left it set it like was not budging the only thing I don't like about it is how kind of like waxy the actual pencil is I felt like when I was gliding it through my actual waterline it was just kind of just kind of messy application wise like usually there's a little bit of grip to an eye pencil this one didn't and it was just like I don't know, maybe that's just me, <laughs> but I just felt like the moisture in my eye kind of fought against the pencil in a way, and it wasn't easy to slide on. I'm kind of in the middle with this one. The eyelashes from Primark, I would 10 out of 10 recommend. They were so easy to put on. They're really good styles, so you can probably find ones that you like, but I really like the quality. They're really soft. They don't feel heavy on my eyes. I can't really feel them at all. They are bold and dramatic like other expensive brands that I've bought. The Kiko Mascara, I honestly think I'll pass on. I've got other mascaras that just do it in one coat. So, oh, the Barry 
sorry I'm glitter, I forgot to say about this. It looks pretty on my eyelids and it's set down, it's not like crinkly, it doesn't make my eyelids feel stiff or anything. I wouldn't say this is an eyeshadow, it's just like a topper in my opinion. And finally the lip product by L'Oreal. It smells good. It does smell like chocolate, so it does do that. I don't know, I can't work out the formula. It's a bit thicker than what I typically like for a lip product. It's just not my favorite formula in the world, so that's just personal preference though. Okay, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed me trying a few new products, and I hope you like the look. I always like trying new products to see if they're worth the money and see if they actually work. If you do enjoy these kind of videos then don't forget to hit the little subscribe button and that will notify you when I upload. If you want to know 100% when I upload don't forget to click the little bell next to the subscribe button. If you like this kind of glittery warm smoky eye then don't forget to leave a little thumbs up on the video and that is it from me. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and until next time I shall see you in the next video. Bye guys!